Welcome to the Lightweights Podcast. Buckle your seatbelt, sit the fuck down, and get ready for Ilya to throw pizza down your throat. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lightweights. Uh, are we late? Are we late? Like, have we not posted since last week? Yeah. Wow. What do you got? <laughs> um, my friend got me a watch. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> what are you doing with the other one now? <laughs> Can I be honest with you? You like the other one better? I like the other one. I like how the other one fits me better. I don't have to worry that someone's going to steal the other one. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so to preface everybody, uh, Dave got me a Rolex. And wow. Yeah, it was sick. Did he post it? Not yet. That's sick, man. Yeah. But um, yeah, he got me a Rolex. It's really, really cool. It's the one. It's the exact one I wanted with the blue face, silver band. Um, and what's the issue? The issue is that well, there is no issue. It's just the Gucci one that you got me, which you were wearing all the time prior to this Rolex. I know. I actually wore it this weekend. I I just like the way it fits me better. Like this, like because the, the links are different sizes. Oh, if if you remove another link here, it, it'd be too tight. So like, there's no like, I don't know. The links are just a better size on the Gucci one, which is strange. But did you cry when he gave it to you? No. Were you happy? Yeah, I love this watch. Happier I, when he gave you that, or happier when I gave you the Gucci one? Um, probably this. <laughs> <laughs> and was it like a a celebration? Like, congrats, we opened a pizza thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sick. Yeah, I knew about the watch for a while. Oh, uh, did you? I almost blew it so many times. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Now you just gotta one up him. Yeah. Uh, uh, why, why don't I forget? How much was it? Do you know? <laughs> I think. Um. So this is a Rolex Oyster Perpetual. I think these go for the MSRP, which you can't get. Like MSRP means. Like, if you go directly to Gucci and you go, hey, Gucci, we're going to buy this from you right now. Right. Instead of going through the distributor. Sorry, Gucci. Rolex. A third party. Yeah. Instead of buying through a third party, it's like eight grand. But you can't get it for eight grand. It's it's like, it's closer to like 14. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to get a Rolex like last year and it was impossible. Yeah. When well, I saw that, he's like, yo, what do you think? Do you think he's going to like it? I'm like, yeah, he's going to fucking like it. Yeah. Yeah. I love this watch. It's sweet. What a piece of shit. <laughs> but you got me uh you got me Louis Vuitton glasses. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you surprised? <laughs> yeah, I was. I got you Louis Vuitton sunglasses for your birthday. Yeah, man. People are just gifting me shit left and right, man. It's crazy. I know. It's you, crazy. You just walk around and you're like <laughs> such a target to like bother, <laughs> give something to. <laughs> yeah. You're wearing a Versace shirt. Did you buy yeah. that yourself? No, actually my mom got it for me. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. For your birthday? For I don't even know for what. Opening the restaurant? Maybe. I think that's what it is. Dude, I oh, it. they were just in Italy. She just got me something because they were in Italy. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. You think it's real? Yeah, it's actually really nice. And it's comfy? Really comfy. Do you really... ever wear the Versace robe I got you? <laughs> yeah, it's in my bathroom. I wear it all the time. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, that's sick. I yeah. never wear mine. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I met Exhibit two days ago. Oh, yeah, dude. How was that? Fucking... Guys, for those of you who don't know, Exhibit is the host of Pimp My Ride uh, popular TV show that was around for a long time. No longer around, but how was it? Fucking incredible. He's a rapper. He was the only one outside of that shady Dr. Dre camp to be produced by Dr. Dre. Wait, wasn't he Wasn't he in D12? No. Oh. No, but he, he has a lot of songs with Eminem and Dr. Dre. Yeah. He's so fucking nice. He's really? He's so nice. And I watched all these uh, interviews with him beforehand to see, like, to get the vibe and everything I could talk about with him. And he was just so cool, so nice. And his whole philosophy is you don't know who... Everyone starts somewhere. So be nice to everybody because you yeah. don't know if they're going to be your boss next week. Totally. And that's his whole thing. That's fucking sick. Drove out to Vegas. He has a hot dog at a restaurant called Dirt Dog. So that's what we were promoting. Yeah. So the company hired me to do videos for them. And then I also did a real and a full YouTube video. He sat in Caitlin's car. We drove Caitlin's car. He sat in Caitlin's car for 25 minutes and we just talked it up. That's so cool. That's like that's like a celebrity that like is huge, but like in some weird way, like not at the same time. At the time of Pimp My Ride, he was more recognizable than the Pope. Yeah, I'm. Just, I think that's what I'm trying to say. Like, not that he's not huge, but he's huge for like, he's he's more huge for the show than rapping. Yeah, you know that's what I'm trying to say. Which is super strange, dude. And he was on the Up and Smoke tour with Eminem, Dr. Dre, like, fucking so cool. He's on the song. What's the difference? 
Yeah. What's the difference between me and you? Wait, what? Uh, did he talk? Did you ask him questions about Dre and Eminem or anything? Yes, I talked about Dre. I didn't really ask much about Eminem because in his other interviews, it's like same thing. Like when we list, when we when we do our research for guests, I don't want to ask the same questions that they did on four other yeah. podcasts. So I try and do something different. But I didn't ask him about Pimp My Ride, and I don't know. I just wanted it to be a little different for him to be like excited about it. And he seemed like he loved mm. it. What did he say about Pimp My Ride? Um, I didn't ask him about it. Oh, oh, you didn't. Okay. Other interviews did. But he, I think it went on for two seasons. And in the other interviews, they say something like they couldn't come to terms with like another contract. So that's why it stopped. And then they tried replacing him, but it just wasn't the same. It's so crazy how like shows fail to recognize that people like that are the ones that carry the show. Yeah. You know? And th- I think that was their big downfall. Yeah. They thought that you could replace him, but you can't. He's fucking exhibit. He started the show. He's the host of the show. Like he's isn't he's that, what makes the show. Isn't that weird how how like people fail to recognize stuff like that? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's clear as day, like hindsight, but in the moment they're like, oh well we can do without him. It really never works. Yeah. It never works. No. No 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 no. When you when you have such a uh closely knit character to the Whatever you're doing, you can't just fucking replace them. We can't replace you to the Lightweights podcast. It wouldn't work. No, it literally would not work. I thought about it. I thought too, and I was like, no way. <laughs> Replacing I'm, I'm, me or you? Both. <laughs> <laughs> Taking myself out of the equation. And I was like, no, there's no way he wouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> I'm good. I went to Vegas too on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh, yeah. How is that? Like dead or no? It's not dead. It's just such a weird vibe. Yeah, Wednesday is a weird vibe. Dude, I, I, I feel like, I don't know, Vegas is, isn't special anymore for me. Me you neither. Know? Like, now it's just kind of like we're, we live so close, we go so often, it's just like, what? It's like fucking going to, like, Santa Monica. Yeah. You know? I played slots. We lost 80 bucks. That's it? Yeah. You, it's just you and Kate? Yeah. I don't I don't want to gamble anymore. I'm over it. Well, we still got about the 100 grand. No, we don't. Yeah, we do. No, we don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we do. do. <laughs> I have a fun fact about a lottery winner. A woman hit the lottery for one point three million dollars. Right. She hid it from her husband, and eleven days later, divorced her husband. He found out two years later from a letter in the mail, and it was the lottery company saying, "Do you want to get the lump sum, or do you want to continue getting the monthly earnings?" Okay, because yeah, they didn't like recognize that they were divorced. Because he stayed at that same address. Right. Okay. So he got the letter, but they were divorced at th- divorced at this time two years later. Correct. But she won the lottery at the time they, that were, they were married. married. He sued her, and for fraud, oppression, and malice, ended up winning one hundred percent of the earnings. Plus, she had to pay the court fees on her end. Yeah, but that money was probably gone by then. I don't know. I don't either, but two years for a million bucks, you know, assuming that, that she didn't have that much money. In 1993, that was a lot of money. I agree, but I'm just saying, like, you know, people people that win the lottery, they spend that shit fast. Really quickly. So... Do you think it would fuck your life up or help you? I think it would fuck anybody's life up. I mean, you have to be, like, super... Actually, I don't even know I was going to say super intelligent, but if you win the lottery and you aren't accustomed to having that much money that would have to fuck with you like right. no matter who you are unless you're somehow like you already have a ton of money and you accidentally won and then you're just like whatever there was another dude who had 17 million dollars and he won 300 million that's crazy i mean i can't even imagine why is he even playing the lottery at that point <laughs> I, I know right <laughs> go go do something else he won he won a second time no he didn't win a second time he his business is he was, owned a construction company he was worth seventeen million dollars, uh, and he still played the lottery and ended up winning over three hundred million. Oh, because seventeen million and three hundred million are two very different numbers. So he's probably like, "Fuck it." Why yeah, that's not? fair. Yeah, but yeah, I would totally. Fuck. Well, what's the first thing you would do? Oh, I think we've talked about this. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I I just buy like rental properties. <laughs> Nothing fun. Maybe I'll buy you a better watch than David's that he got you. <laughs> just ten dollars more. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. <laughs> I went to this place in Northern California called Ostrich Land. 
Yeah, I saw, man. You're doing the most random shit now. Huh? It's so fucking funny. <laughs> Why is it funny? There's just like there's like 200 ostriches just running around. Yeah. And there's emus and you run around <laughs> and you feed them and they're so aggressive. And have you ever seen the movie Tremors? No. They're like worms in the ground and they, the heads come up and they like they uh, try okay. and pull it from you. It's I'd say we should go, but I know you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did you go there? It's for like content? No, it's by this other town called Solvang uh, that we went to go visit, and it was just like a Dutch town. My mom loves you, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know why. She keep talking about me? Yeah, she brought you up. That's sweet. And before she left, I was like, did you have a good time? She's like, yeah, and that Ilya is so sweet. And Caitlin <laughs> and I looked at each other like, Ilya? <laughs> 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 wow yeah man what can i say I just have that charm what an impression i know well your mom was very sweet and so was your dad was your mom here for the dobrix party no just my dad Dude. how was the dobrix party really good were you there yes <laughs> you, we took many photos did we yes how much did it cost um a lot really yeah yeah a lot was um, it cool like was it easy to throw together uh well we had a party planner so like unlike the Zila party where we plan ourselves, we had a party planner, so they took care of everything. But uh, and what would you do for the next party? Would you do it yourselves or hire a party planner? A uh, party planner for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's it makes life so much fucking easier. Diplo came. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people came that night that I didn't see. Yeah, I didn't see like half the people there. Even I saw I saw Alicia Marie for like a second, and then I would turn away and she's gone. Yeah, well, I, I don't know why. Maybe the space, was, the space is, was really big. It was really big, and it was sectioned off, and it was dark. Right, right. So it's like it was hard to tell. I didn't even know there was a photo booth until I left. I didn't know there was a photo booth until now. Yeah, there was a photo oh, booth. Oh wow, it was sick. Oh shit! <laughs> wow, I got so drunk. I heard you had to throw up on the way home. So yeah, so <laughs> Taylor's driving my car home, and we have David's parents in the back. <laughs> is it the five of you? It's uh, it's me, Taylor, David's dad, and David's mom. Okay, I'm what sitting, a crew! What a crew! I'm sitting in the front, and like thirty seconds into the drive home, I'm like, Taylor, pull over! <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not joking. Thirty seconds in, yeah. And prior to this, I already threw up on the street. Oh no! And now I'm in the car, and I'm like, Taylor, pull over! I gotta get out and throw up. So. She pulls over, I throw up, whatever, I do my thing. She keeps driving, and then we're almost at the house, like literally going up the hill. And uh, I'm like, I'm like Taylor, pull over. <laughs> throw up again. Dude, I have no idea how I got so fucking drunk. Because all night I was fine. Yeah, you were good. All night. And then like the last 30 minutes, for whatever reason, I think I just took like three or four extra shots. And you know like that one shot that just takes you over the top? Right. That was it. Yeah. For sure. Were a lot of people coming over to congratulate you and Oh up? yeah, a ton. A ton. A ton. Yeah. It was actually a really fun night, but I was I was hung over for two fucking days. I like dude, I, I, I don't drink ever. <laughs> ever. Lightweight. <laughs> Literally. And when I do drink, it, it that ends up happening. Damn. I was so fucked up. I don't know I don't think you understand. I don't even know how I got that drunk. Like I'm I'm actually I really mean that. I have no idea how I got that drunk. When was the last time you threw up from drinking? Oh, man. Probably, like, beginning of this year. Oh. No, actually. When you the rode the motorcycle in the pool? No, no. No, that was last year. The last time I threw up from drinking was Aspen in December. Oh, yeah. Of last year. Yeah. So it's literally been a year since I've thrown up from drinking. Sheesh. At that, I think that's the last time I drank. Like, that's the last time I, like, got drunk like that. Wow. Dude. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really few and far between. It's, like, once a year. Well, we're going to get drunk tonight for Zane's birthday. Are you getting drunk tonight? I will if you do. Oh, fuck. Would you? Yeah. No! Uh, <laughs> would you? A little bit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Should we? I think so. What do you, what's the plan for tonight? I don't know. Let's go get drunk. Are we going Are we, Are we? Going oh, fuck. To your house beforehand? No, we're going to dinner. We have dinner at 8.30. Got it. What? Um. You're in the chat, I think, right? Nope. All right, I'm going to add you. You opened Dobrik's. Last Monday? Sunday? Last Saturday. How was that opening? Bro. Unreal. Un like unreal. The whole state came out. The entire country. <laughs> entire planet. Um yeah. It was unreal. It was unreal. It was unreal. I mean like it's funny because it's such a double it's such a double sided 
sword. Is that the way to say it? Yeah. It's such a double-edged sword because on one hand, you have so much love, so much support, and then on the other, you're like, holy fucking shit, I can't handle this, you know? Yeah. So you just got to keep reminding yourself, like, this is a blessing, okay? It's good that we have these fucking problems, you know what I mean? It's good that our planter is breaking, you know? It's good that people are fucking like causing traffic in West Hollywood. Like it's that's all good, you know? Now you gotta kinda like take a step back and be like, how do we fix those problems? You know? And like our staffing, we're understaffed because we're fucking so busy. It's just like there's so many things, but so many good problems. And I always tell people like, you'd rather have these problems than to be slow. Because right. I've been slow in my life in business and it's the absolute worst feeling ever. Absolute worst when you're sitting there and you have nothing to do other than to find customers. That's the wor- that's the most gut wrenching feeling you'll ever get. And I'm so we are so blessed and so fucking lucky that we don't have to deal with that. That like we have people come, you know, just because David has such an insanely big brand. And what what anything cool come from like the opening? Anything? Yeah, I mean, we had uh, <clears throat> uh, that Monday, I think, or Tuesday after we had the news. Mario Lopez. Access Hollywood came? Yeah. No. Well, well, we had pizzas delivered to them. What? Yeah. And they, they ordered it they, from you? They tried it on air. What? Yeah. How come I didn't see this? I don't know, but it, it, I think it came out today or maybe yesterday. Oh, that's sick. Super sick. Super sick. Um, Mario Lopez took a bite of your pizza? Yeah. Wow. Him and his co-anchor. Did you deliver it yourself? No, I had Emma. Deliver you had Emma do it? Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. They said they think their lines are worth the wait because they like the pizza. It's insane. It's insane. And you know, a lot of people ask me, like, why pizza? Because, honestly, everybody loves it. Honestly, you yeah. know? Everybody loves pizza. And everybody wants to try it. I say, we get the band together. You and me, pizza mukbang in the car. What do you say? I'm down. Really? Of course. Fuck yeah. I'm going to do it for my own restaurant, bro. Come on. When? Um, it like you know uh, next year, yeah, like <laughs> February. February of next year. <laughs> no, I'm down in uh, after Thanksgiving. I'm down. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's gonna be sick. Anyways, absolute fucking craziness. Um, it's been it's been absolutely crazy and busy, and uh, I'm we're super thankful for all the love and support. And the party was great. And yeah, man, just it's insane. That's crazy. Yeah. What what what's going on with Zila? Because that's that's really my bread and butter. And every time I tell Dave that I have a company, a uh, stake in the company, he always goes, "No, you don't." <laughs> Did you not tell him? I told him. He uh, asked me why. <laughs> and I told him I'm like because originally he was supposed to invest, and then I told him I can't, and that felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, how'd you make your first billion? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't invest. I didn't invest, but Ilya felt bad. Um, yeah, no, it's going good. We have uh, we our peanut butter cup. Have you tried that yeah. flavor yet? You it's like incredible. It? Yeah. Um, our Black Friday deal goes out. Our Black Friday deal is insane. Listen to this. This is actually crazy. Can you say it? A hundred percent. Okay. Ready? Black Friday deal is it's a, it's a bundle. It's a box, right? A black box. Pretty sick, actually. You get protein, two pre workouts, um a liquid chalk, a blender bottle, ACV, a black hat, black on black Zila hat, <clears throat> and a 14-day workout regimen. All all everything 50% off, 50. Oh wow. Yeah, so the original price like if you add all that shit up is $225. Yeah. But you can buy it for 112. That's uh, insane. That. Yeah, it's fucking insane. You're crazy. November 22nd. Go check it out. And you only get the peanut butter flavor? You can't swap no, it you, out. No, with- you you can you can choose whatever flavor. Is Java chip back? Uh Java chip will be back on Cyber Monday. Okay, cuz I yeah. saw that in the house today and I was really pumped. Yeah, I was pumped too. I think that's such a kick-ass flavor. It's so good. Does yeah. it still have the little sprinkles in it? Of course. And are those regular sprinkles? What are they? Uh no, they're the protein sprinkles. Oh, so there's protein in it? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I think. You Wait, should actually make... I don't know. They're okay. they're vegan sprinkles. They are vegan though. Yeah, of course. That's sick. Healthy sprinkles. Are you excited for the pickleball court at our new house? Uh <laughs> Speaking of that, did you ever invest? 
Uh, no, did you? <laughs> no, but we said dead ass, so at some point we have to. Yeah, I owe David fifty thousand, and I owe my dad fifty thousand. And <laughs> wait, I, why do you, why do you owe your dad fifty? Because when the market was like down, I needed to like pay something, and then I just I could have given it back to him. And then what do you mean down. when the market was down? You mean when you had no money? It, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> like, no it wasn't when the that. market was down, there was there was like a whole thing with like having it. It was like tied up in something, and it was just easier. For me to borrow it from him rather than just like take it out. Like, I, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So and I then the market went down even more, <laughs> and then I like couldn't really pay him back in full. So I was like, look, can we just wait until like I'm comfortable? And then yeah. Uh huh. So I owe him. I owe David. <laughs> hmm. I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do two a week. <laughs> <sighs> it's all chill, man. Is it? I don't know. Okay. No, probably not. Matt, this is Matt King's topic. He told me about it from his own podcast. But do you have fond memories of a good basement or an attic? Um, basements, yeah. Like growing sure. up, was there one friend that just had the sickest basement? Yeah. Who was it? Uh, his name is Nick Salerno, and then my other buddy, uh, his name is Tyler Jacobson. And what they have in it? Uh, my buddy Tyler had a studio. He had this like really really big screen, like to make music. TV, yeah. Oh wow, like a full on studio, um, like a a pool table, like a just like a really big basement, like really nice. That's sick. And then my other buddy had like this really decked out basement, like nice finishes, movie theater room, um, yeah, just both, yeah, just both really really fucking nice. Damn. Why? I don't know. It was just you, so. Nice. You, you don't have any fond memories? No, okay. I do. My friend Scott, mm-hmm. he was a triplet, so his snack cabinet was always stacked because there were three boys there, and he had like all these different sections of like sweet candy, and then there's the salty chips, and then in the cabinet below he had Entenmann's donuts, but like his mom would buy the entire like everything. It was always stacked. Yeah, I, you know what's funny? I actually remember one of my buddies. His name is Nolan, and he had the exact same thing in Highland Park. Like, I would come to his house, and he would be, like, stacked up on snacks. Oh, yeah. And then at one point, his mom got really into cookie cakes. So every time we'd go there, there'd be a fresh cookie cake, double-layered, frosting on Isn't the inside. Isn't it crazy how, how much food, like, controls our emotions? Yeah, it made, me, it made me so happy. I was just like, that was part of the reason to hang out with Scott. Totally. It was totally. the best. And then he had a ping-pong table downstairs, a pool table upstairs, and everything was sectioned off so we could just be boys. Okay, guys, so if you have kids, this is definitely a lesson for you to get a fuckload of snacks. Get a fuckload of <laughs> so snacks. So people hang out with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Talking hot Cheetos, Entenmann's Donuts. What are you waiting for? Did you know that the first novel in the world that was, dude? I'm sorry, reading's hard. Rusty, man. I know. You got to come back. Did you know that the fir- I saw in the podcast of you, Natalie, and Jason, you were putting lightweights first again above Zila and Dobrik. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's sick. Yeah, I got you. Okay, we're ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that the first novel uh, ever written was called The Tale of Genji, and it was written in the 11th century. And towards uh, about the end of the 54th chapter, it just ends mid-sentence. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that's my kind of book. <laughs> I know. That's, that's like a fucking prank you would do. You think he like died or something? I don't know. He but it just It just stops. Yeah, maybe the king took him out. Let me see what else it says. That's like the Sopranos ending. No one knows. <laughs> they just ended mid-sentence too? No. Oh, you know what I just found out? What? In the Sopranos, I didn't see it. But at the, I did see the last episode. Tony Soprano, the mean, main guy, whatever happens, the screen blacks out, and then you hear a gunshot. Yeah. You don't know if it's him that dies or someone else that dies, whatever. But Tony Soprano was based on a real guy. And in real life, I believe he turned over to the FBI, and he became an informant. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's sweet. You know what? You want to know something even cooler than that? What's cooler than being cool? I'm being high school. I'm being completely. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You have no culture. Okay. Who was that? Uh, we're Who done. Who was that? All right, guys. No, thank no, no, you. no. Who was that? Who was that? You don't know Outcast. anything. Okay. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening to Lightweights Podcast. This has been an unreal episode. Once again, your two favorites here, Joe and Ilya. Obviously, I'm more favorite than Joe. I'm, I, if we're being real by like 3 or 4%.
You know what I mean? Like, you're not that much less favorite than me, but, like, you are. Like, let's be real. I have so many things to say right now. First off, what's that cooler fact? You never told us the cooler fact. Oh, oh. oh. I was just going to say I I didn't hear anything you said. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're number one. No, actually, though, I had no idea what you said. No, I believe you. Yeah, about the Sopranos, no idea. That's why people like If you put a gun to my head right now and been like, what did Joe say about the Sopranos? I'd be like, I don't know, something about some guy being an informant. Then maybe we should get a gun and put it to your head. Okay. Okay. Great. (laughs) Buy our hats, lightweightspod.com. Or don't. Or there's only a couple left. <laughs> uh, you've been saying that for like the last month. If you yell at them to tell them to buy it, they'll buy it. Nope, I'm not yelling. I'm using my calm voice, guys. Please go buy the hat or we will go bankrupt. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh. Out.